at, an, uh, at, a, at an agricultural school, internationally funded, where we teach farmers in Colombia, this is Puerto de Mayo, Colombia, in southern, southern Colombia, we teach them to grow other crops besides coca. We spray that as well. Um, it's a very uh, imprecise science. Uh, this is a farmer I've been following since 2001. He did exactly what we asked him, our government asked him to do. He and his wife tore up their coca crops. Everyone knew coca at the time down there. He manually eradicated their own crops, uh, borrowed money from extended family, and realized they could grow peppercorn and hearts of palm and sell it across the border in Ecuador, which is about 20 miles away. Uh, they even went so far as to put up these, these, these big poles, 30-foot uh, poles with white flags that tell the spray pilots, don't spray me, I'm not growing coca, I'm growing legal crops. We have sprayed him now four times. Uh, I've talked to farmers who've been sprayed seven times and they're growing legal crops. Uh, three times he got sprayed directly, and one time through aerial drift when they were trying to spray a neighbor's farm. He remains the only peasant farmer to be compensated for the wrongful fumigation in the entire province of Guatemala, despite more than 10,000 claims of farmers of wrongful spray. Not all of them were wrong, not all of them were technically valid because they may have been growing some coca, uh, which under Columbia law is illegal, but many of them were valid and they weren't growing illicit crops. I've been to these farms, I've walked all over them and, and investigated. Um, this is that farmer's uh, farm, this is after the fourth time he was sprayed. This is taken during the rainy season in Colombia and the, the Amazon. Everything should be green here. Um, and you can see, you can tell it's fumigated because the treetops were also defoliated, uh, not just the, the grasses. And they were growing parts of palm. You can see the blow up here, the little, little green things here. Uh, we're spraying. And this is his wife. Um, she's in her 60s. And this is about one week after they were sprayed, fourth time. See that the hearts of palm are turning yellow here. Um, and it was this actually this photo I took the U.S. Embassy and demanded that they they compensate this person. Uh, that every time I met with the embassy, they said, "Oh no, it didn't happen. You didn't you didn't see what you saw. Uh, you can't prove it. It was uh, um, you can't prove it was our spray planes that did it. Um, and 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 they were probably growing coca anyway." I said, "No, no, no. I've been to this spot and I've walked all over it." They did not have any coca. They didn't tear up the coca after they were sprayed to try to claim they were innocent. There were no holes in the ground, that sort of thing. This was a valid claim. And she got compensated about one-fifth of what she lost. So um, this is a close-up of her farm. Monsanto, the manufacturer of the herbicide, uh, says don't let your livestock uh, graze on these lands after they've been fumigated. Let them dry thoroughly, but these farmers don't have uh, the means to, to build expensive corrals and find alternative sources of feed for their cattle, uh, and this is the kind of thing that happens. Uh, this is a field nearby that had no coca, no nothing uh, going on there, but it was sprayed um, completely inexplicably. This is another farmer in a different province called Guaviare, um, deeper in the Amazon. Uh, and these are his crops that were sprayed as well. You can tell that things again are turning brown and the tree crops again are defoliated. Um, and this is the result of manual eradication. Uh, when I ran into those eradicators in the, uh, in the field, this is, what they, this is what they do. They have these special hoes and they sever, or they're supposed to sever the rootstock of the coca bush and uproot it. Um, but in fact, what many of them were doing was just basically pulling the, the thing out of the ground and leaving it on the ground. And the next hilltop over, um, as these people were eradicating, you can see the peasant farmers on the next hill taking their eradicated coca and putting it back into the ground, adding water to it, and hoping it will re-sprout. Or they use these things as cuttings to splice into existing rootstock. Um, and the eradicators saw this. They didn't care. It's, it's a racket to them. Uh, it's job security. They get the claim. They eradicated uh, all these hectares of, of coca bushes. Um, and there's plenty more for next year. So there's more work for them. And I, I talk to people in the military, uh, in the army especially, the Colombian army thinks this, many of them think this is a really stupid policy because they have a 45 year old civil war going on. The guerrillas get a lot of their financing from, uh, from, from uh, the cocaine trade, as do the right wing paramilitary death squads, they're, they're our generals. Uh, and the, uh, this colonel told me, look, uh, why do we want to, 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 to piss off these peasant farmers? They'll just end up joining the guerrillas or, or the narco traffickers, uh, and then we have to fight them. Um, and so sometimes the army told me, off the record, I won't name him, 
but sometimes they'll actually warn the farmers. There's a eradication team in this area, they're coming to your area next week, you better harvest your token now. We'll give them, they'll give them advance warning. Um, because they have no interest in alienating these farmers. Um, and this is the, this is the question, what, what are these farmers supposed to do once with their, their, their livelihoods are eradicated? They live in very remote areas. Uh, there's, there's, there's no state presence, very little state presence, and very little way of, 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 of making a living. And coca grows well in these regions, and it's easy to transport coca paste because you can create the coca paste on your farm using very basic chemicals. And I've watched people do this. I have a film called Shoveling Water. You can watch it on Vimeo.com. Um, and uh, it, it shows you the process of, of making the coca paste on the farm. And it's a little lab. They have a, a shack, basically. It's a, basically a wooden platform with a plastic tarp and a couple of, of, of um, uh, 50 gallon drums uh, soaked with gasoline. And so they use things like gasoline, cement, sulfuric acid, uh, a few other chemicals, uh, cement, uh, to create the coca paste. And the paste is the intermediary for cocaine. It's crude cocaine that the, the traffickers or the guerrillas or the paramilitaries will come to these farmers, pay them cash on the barrel, and take it away for them very often, um, and, and the process the pure cocaine uh, and, and smuggle it out of the country. So what are these farmers supposed to do once they've been eradicated? because they keep getting eradicated over and over again. As far as I see it, and this is what I brought, brought up to the U.S. Embassy over and over again, as I see it, there are three options. Number one, uh, you can either uh, become displaced and join the uh, more than four, four and a half million internally displaced people in Colombia. After four decades, four and a half decades of, of war uh, and the drug war, um, Colombia now has about 10% of its population internally displaced. This is, this is worse than Sudan, worse than Darfur. I mean, it's one of the biggest IDPs, internally displaced populations, in the world. Um, and our communication only adds to that. Um, so what are your options? You can become displaced, you can go deeper into the rainforest, cut down more, uh, more of the jungle, and plant more coca, and more productive varieties of coca than the original stuff we eradicated, because then, again, like any other crop, they're always innovating. Uh, they're coming up with much bushier varieties of coca that have higher yield per acre than the stuff we originally destroyed. Or they can join the illegal armed actors, whether it's the guerrillas who have money to pay these people to fight, uh, or the paramilitaries who are also drug traffickers and, and pay them very well, uh, or the narco traffickers. Um, and, I'll, and I'll walk you through these options. Um, you can see it visually what happens. This is the one of the women who's eradicated. Um, and look in her eyes. I don't know if you can quite see it. Um, it reminded me of, um, I mean, the, 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 the desire for vengeance here was just so visceral. It reminded me of uh, going to Georgia, for instance, uh, down south, and mentioning Sherman's March to the Sea. Right. Generations later, they still remember viscerally how, how bitter they are about that experience. Um, and for me, it, it was heartbreaking to see this happen to Colombians. I, in some ways, I would almost rather they fumigated, um, that they blame this all on some nameless, faceless gringo mercenary pilot who disappears into the horizon after destroying their farms, than to blame it on fellow Colombians, because they have to be busted from neighboring provinces for security reasons, because these people would tell the guerrillas on them or join the guerrillas or kill them outright. Um, and so they have to bring them so they can't be recognized. They, I, they wouldn't let me photograph uh, their faces, uh, the eradicators, because they were so terrified of reprisals. And a lot of brutality goes along with this process as well. Um, these are, again, remote regions. There never was rule of law or justice or accountability to begin with. And these eradicators are paid twice the minimum wage. Uh, and the sun uh, goes down at 6.30 every day you by the equator. Um, and there's not much to do in the nighttime. You're in the countryside, and they get to drinking. They realize they say, "Oh, yeah, the farmer up the road has a daughter." I, I recall. I can go and visit the farmer's daughter. There have been rapes. There have been murders. There have been uh, theft of, of livestock because they're given uh, canned rations that only last them uh, the, the, the last the entire time. And so there's theft going on uh, and all these things. So it's it's caused tremendous suffering for these farmers. Some of them will flee. Um, either because their livelihoods, their, their food security is gone, or because the armed actors have displaced them, the guerrillas or the paramilitaries. Um, sometimes there's a lot, 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 there are a lot of land grabs going on. Last year alone, 380,000 Colombians were displaced from their homes. Uh, this is at a time when they claim 